The question says here, it's on cash budgets, and it says, explain why a business needs to prepare a cash budget every year. Clearly, the purpose behind a cash budget is to plan. Remember, a cash budget is a forecasting tool. You're forecasting what will happen in the future, right? So it is a plan for what? For future, and this is important, receipts and payments. Cash budget, think cash. Future, receipts and payments. In order to ensure that we have enough cash on hand, and this is important, and that is why it's part of internal control. It's part of planning for the future, right? Obviously, we want to calcul calculate a future bank balance. Here, yeah, you can see that. Or we need to prioritize taking corrective measures from previous deviations. In other words, if there was um, a, an overspent in, in the previous month or in the previous year, then we need to take corrective measures to ensure that it doesn't happen again, right? So therefore, why are we drawing up a cash budget? To prepare for the future, and we're looking at future receipts, watch the word, Watch, watch, the, watch my lips, receipts and payments, not incomes and expenses. If you say incomes and expenses, you will see here, we do not accept incomes and expenses, right? So do not use incomes and expenses, and that's for a cash budget. Yes, if the question had said, What's the purpose of a projected income statement? Yes, now you say to project or to plan future incomes and expenses. Absolutely correct. There you can't use receipts and payments because you're dealing with a projected income statement. Okay, let's move on. So here you are given an extract from a cash budget, right? And you are told to calculate the expected receipts from your debtors for November 2019. In other words, you want that figure there. What are you told? You are told that your cash sales makes up 75% of total sales, number one, and you are told the debtors pay you. How do they pay you? They pay you within 30 days and they're entitled to a discount of 5%. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to tell yourself, right, my cash sales in terms of this year was 180,000 and it made up 75%. So clearly what you're gonna say is 180,000 is equal to my 75%, my 100% is equal to my unknown, right? So what are we gonna do here? We're gonna calculate that and it's going to give you a figure then. Remember, that's not going to give you your credit sales. Now remember this people, very important. When you're working with a debtor's collection schedule, let's put this down so you remember it. When you're working with a debtor's collection schedule, the figure that you want is your credit sales. Remember that. When you're looking at the creditor's payment schedule, what do you need? You need, firstly, you need your cost of sales. Once you have your cost of sales, you then separate it into cash purchases and credit purchases. Keep in mind that we use what is called base stock. What do we mean by base stock? Very simple. If this is your trading stock account, if you start off with 100,000 at the beginning of the period, you must end off with 100,000 at the end of the period. So your cost of sales figure here, the one that you're going to calculate, will be split up into your cash sale and your, uh, sorry, your cash purchases and your credit purchases. So once again, debtors collection schedule, credit sales, important, credit is payment, cost of sales split up into cash purchases and credit purchases. Okay, so going back here, 
We've taken, we worked out now that our, 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 our cash sale was uh, 180,000, uh, 180, you are told, which was 75%. If you worked out the 100%, it will give you total sales. If you worked out the 25%, if you worked out the 25% here, then this will give you your credit sale immediately, which works out to uh, 60,000, right? And then remember, you are entitled to a 5% discount. So if you're paying that, you'll take 60,000 times your 95%. A simple technique here, guys, is yes, you can work out the 5% and then subtract it, but very simple. Once you have the amount that you're going to be receiving from your debtors, and you know that you're entitled, at least they are entitled to a 5% discount, so you're only going to be receiving 95% of the amount, so you just say, take the amount times 95%, and that will then give you your total the anticipated receipt for November, right? So to recap here, what is important to note, when you're looking at the debtors collection schedule, you're looking at credit sales. That's your most important figure. And when you're looking at a creditor's payment schedule, what are you looking at? You're looking at your cost of sales figure, which you then split up into cash purchases and credit purchases. Okie dokie, let's move on. You are given a cash budget once again, right? And you are told in this cash budget that your rent income increased by 9% when? On the 1st of November 2019. Calculate the rent income for October. In other words, this one here is given to you, which has the 9% increase in it. You are expected to work out the month prior to that. Okay, now, how are we going to do that? Very simple. All that we say is, the 10464 is equal to 109%. Why am I saying 109%? Because I'm told that the rent income increased by 9% for, from the 1st of November. So obviously, it was 100% prior to the increase, plus the increase of 9% will give me the 109% for the, for the new rental figure. The old rental obviously has to be 100% is equal to your unknown. Therefore, look at your question. It is 10464 times 100 divided by 109. Can you see? 10464 divided by 109, and that will give you your old rental of 9000 600. In other words, what was my rental prior to the increase that, that was effective and the increase was 9%. Okay, just another important one that we need, let's just talk about cash budgets while we at it. Which items do not feature in my cash budget? Which items will not be included in my cash budget? What are they? One, depreciation. Why? Because it is clearly an imputed expense. Depreciation does not affect the flow of funds. Therefore, you will not include depreciation in a cash budget. Remember, cash budget, think cash, only cash items. What else can you have? What, what, what else will not appear in your cash budget? Remember, you could have an item called profit on sale of asset. That will also not appear in my cash budget. And yes, there are many more items that you could identify that will not appear in your cash budget. For example, bad debts will not appear in your cash budget. However, however, would this item appear in my cash budget? Let me write it down and then we discuss it. Bad debts recovered. Okay, this one here. Will that one appear in my cash budget? Certainly it would. Why? Because this would be money coming into our bank account. There was a debtor who obviously um, realized that, that they were owing us money and they decided, maybe some, after some time, 
Let's settle the account. Let's pay them their dues. That money is coming into our account. Yes, it is a receipt and will be shown as a receipt under my receipt section of my cash budget. Okay, now, by the same token, guys, if you look at items that will not appear in my projected income statement. Now, here, remember, you're talking projected income statement. What are you talking projected income statement? You are talking incomes... You are talking incomes and expenses. So it's limited to only these items when you are dealing with a projected income statement. So in other words, cash purchase of merchandise will not appear in my projected income statement, right? The cash purchase of a vehicle will not appear in my projected income statement. Any loans that I receive the, the loans, that I, uh, loans that I received, yes, will not appear in my projected income statement. What will appear in my projected income statement? Only incomes and expenses. Okay. Getting on with cash budgets, as the internal auditor, you discover that the actual motor vehicle expenses, right, the actual motor vehicle expenses, for December 2019 were 9,600. Uh, 9, Give two points that you include in your, audit, in your internal auditor's report to whoever you're reporting to. Right, firstly, you can see from the given information. Okay, we don't have it here, but basically what it means here is that you will see that the, the actual amount was in excess of the budgeted amount, right? So the actual amount, let's write it here, the actual amount was greater than your budgeted amount. Okay. So you can see here that the actual expense exceeded the budgeted amount. That means we overspent the budget. We spent more than we budgeted for, right? Now, it's not always bad. You've got to look at the situation. And based on the scenario, you then answer accordingly. So this is how you would answer this question here. It's possible that the increase in your uh, motor vehicle expenses was as a result of fuel prices and maintenance costs. Now, obviously, fuel prices falls within, it falls outside the ambit of your control. Yes, you budget a certain amount, but if the fuel prices increase drastically, there's nothing that you can do about that. You can't control that. So obviously, you need to use your vehicles. You need to deliver the, uh, the items that you, the purpose for which the vehicle was used, you need to do that. So these are items beyond your control, and if that happens, there's nothing you can do about it. However, however, you also have to look at to see whether there was abuse of the vehicle. In other words, check your log sheets, keep records, have a tracker fitted to your vehicle to ensure that the use of vehicles needs to be investigated in order to ensure that our vehicles are used responsibly, right? Also, we need to ensure that our vehicles are serviced regularly in order to avoid unexpected repairs. So it doesn't mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that if we are not using our vehicle, uh, we, are not use, we are not spending the budget on, 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 on the maintenance budget, then it's a good idea. Let me give you an example. If your budget is, say, 10,000 Rand and you only use 5,000 Rand, does that necessarily mean it's good? No, because obviously when you've worked out your budget, you've taken into consideration the maintenance of your vehicles. Now they need to be serviced regularly because if they are not serviced regularly, it may lead, it may lead to major breakdowns and major expenses. So think of all of that when you are answering questions of this nature.